Kevin from DTools, and in this video, I'll provide an introduction to labor types. Before we get started, let's review the topics for this video. First, I will provide a high-level overview of the basics of labor types to help set the stage for a deeper discussion. Next, I will show you how to apply labor types in SI, and we can finish by taking a detailed look at setting rates to help us get the most out of labor types. To lay a solid foundation for your use and understanding of labor types, we'll first talk about the default labor types that are set up in SI when you install the software. Then we'll discuss how to set up simple labor rates. And then we'll take a look at the DTools library and labor type mapping. This allows you to use your own labor terminology that might be a better fit for your business. Here I am in the SI control panel. I navigated here by clicking setup and control panel. And then once I get here, looking under the catalog section, I'm gonna look for labor types. Go ahead and double click labor types to see the four default labor types that ship with system integrator. And those are named rough in, trim, finish, and programming. So let me provide a quick definition of each of these labor types. Uh, when we use the term rough in, we are referring to products in your project, such as bulk wire, uh, back boxes, and rough in panels, things that go inside of the walls, above the ceilings that are permanently part of the structure. When we use the word trim, this typically refers to items um, that are used in the construction process after sheetrock, after paint, when the building is closed up clean and we're using trim products to fill the holes in the walls and ceilings. Examples might be keypads, dimmers, speakers, touch panels, etc. And when we talk about finished products, it's really going to be everything else from an equipment standpoint. It might be equipment racks, the devices that go in the racks, display devices, uh, maybe other high dollar devices that we want to make sure that we don't actually bring to the site until we are confident that it's fully secure. And of course, the, the fourth type programming is another out of the box labor type that we can add in things like control system programming, lighting control programming, motorized shades for DSPs, other devices like that. So let's quickly walk through how we can set up some simple labor rates to get the system up and running. Uh, we'll start with the first three, the rough in, trim, and finish. And in this scenario, we will assume that these are the same rate. So I'll start with rough in. I'm gonna set my cost, right? So this is the cost of the labor to my business. And I'll tab over to the price field and I'm going to set a value here. This is the amount per hour that I'm selling the labor for. And you can see the system calculates a margin calculation for me. Now later we'll dig into these different types and what they mean. But for now, what I want you to remember is that if I have a labor type called rough in and it has a price per hour for the base labor type, and there's a difficulty here set at 100%. What that means is that every product that has the labor type rough in assigned to it, for every hour associated with that product, this labor type generates one hour of time in my project, in my budget, in my proposal that I will present to the customer. Now, we want to use the same rate for trim. So I'll click to trim. And then I'll simply come across to the copy values from dropdown and I will pick rough in. Notice the base labor is populated exactly the same as rough in. And then I'll do the same for finish. And then I'll do the same for programming. And of course, I could set unique rates if I need to, but this will get us started. And the system can now automatically calculate labor for us when we add products to our projects. I've gone ahead and saved those rates. Now I want to talk really briefly about the DTools library and this idea of labor type mapping. If I go to the DTools library, I just want to show you that items in the library will automatically have a labor type assigned. 
it's possible that in your business, you use different terms when you talk about the labor for your project. So for instance, if I was to click on this item, we'll see that this item actually has a labor type defined for it um, that is called finish. This has finish labor and there's actually a four hour budget that we have determined for this item. So that means that if I download this item into my catalog by clicking the download option, my system has a labor type called finish. It will cross-reference that. It will add it to my catalog with four hours of labor. If I decide that I no longer want to use the term finish in my system, I'll head back to the labor types, open those up. I can pick finish. I can then rename it something like installation. Go ahead and save that. And now I can go to the labor type mapping and I can tell the system that anytime I download a product from the DTools library that uses the labor type finish that I will remap it to the type installation that I have stored in my system. In the next section, I'll show you how to apply labor types in the catalog and in a project. Now let's head over to the catalog and take a look at our labor types. Notice that right away, some of my items have a labor type called installation. These previously would have been assigned to finish, but because I renamed the finish labor type, let me say that again, I renamed the finish labor type, it automatically reassigned uh, that across the system to those items that were previously assigned to finish. And again, if I was to download more items from the library, they would automatically be assigned to installation if the library has them assigned to finish. And you also notice in my system, there are some of these items that have multiple types of labor. That is a feature of the labor system. Let's go ahead and open an item. I want you to see how we assign labor types to products in the catalog. So I open the item, I'll click the price tab, and then we can see here the labor type section. I can simply click on the drop down, pick a labor type, assign time to it that I would like um, to apply to the item. If I need more than one type, I can absolutely add additional types from the list, as many as I need to appropriately account for the labor. And in a project, labor type editing works exactly the same way. After adding an item, I double click to edit it, navigate to the price tab and make labor type adjustments. Each labor type is divided into four subtypes. They are base, miscellaneous, management, and design. We'll take a close look at how those work, and then we'll discuss what I call schedulable time. This is our base time plus miscellaneous, and it's really the time that we can put on the calendar to schedule work. And then we'll finish up with some best practices for management and design labor. Let's take a look at how we can utilize our subtypes. So let's start again with our base labor. I like to say this is the time it takes to do the work. So if I'm pulling cable, the base labor is the time associated with pulling the actual wire. And I often ask a question, which is when you schedule work, let's say we schedule eight hour days, what is the labor efficiency you get from your teams in the field? It's rarely eight hours a day. No one ever says eight hours a day. They say seven hours or six and a half or six hours. If the base labor is the time it takes to do the work, we're actually going to use miscellaneous labor to account for what I'll call the non-production time. So the real question is, if we use the same rate, how do we account for the factor? How much of this miscellaneous or non-production time do we need to account for in the day? And this is a simple ratio. If I schedule an eight hour day and six hours is production and two hours is this non-production time, it is simply a two divided by six ratio of 33%. So I'll use that number. If it's one hour versus seven, it's about 14%. So it's just simply a ratio of 
non-production time versus production time in a given day. Why I like this is it allows us to schedule work appropriately to fill our days. The base labor is the time that we're actually working in production and the miscellaneous labor is filling in the gaps around that. Let's finish up with some best practices for management and design. So I'm gonna use the same rates here just to keep it simple. I'll set the rate, but again, how do I calculate the factor? This is a very similar approach. If I have one project manager, and let's say I have four technicians in the field, well, if I'm gonna keep those technicians busy, that is 40 hours a piece or 160 hours. And if I'm gonna keep a project manager busy, that's another 40 hours, and it's a simple ratio, it's 40 hours for the project manager versus the 160 hours for the technician teams or a simple one to four ratio. So that's 25%. I will calculate 25% there. That shows that for every hour of base labor, I get an additional 0.25 hours for project management. I'll set the same rate for design. It's the same situation. If I have one designer um, compared to four technicians, it is again a one to four ratio or 25%. So that covers our labor subtypes and completes our introduction to labor types. Now that you have a good foundation with labor types, to learn more, you can visit the System Integrator Help Center, which is located at docs.dtools.com. Go ahead and search for labor types.